sorry for the interruption. So fire plays a vital role in engineering as well as commercial sector. It is used in variety of field. It starts from cooking to major industrial applications. The fires are effectively utilized in engineering sector to do many active works. Whatever be the situation, whatever be the environment, whatever be the field, fire should be controlled, properly controlled and it should be properly maintained. If the fire is not properly controlled, cause personal, property and environmental damage. The fire finds its applications in variety of field, no doubt about that, but it's a positive side of the fire. But if you think about the negative side of the fire, which cause property, human and environmental loss. If you refer some of the past fire accidents happened in our country, that should be some reasons. What are the reasons? These are all the reasons which cause the major cause of fire accidents. The reasons are improper attention, lack of attention, carelessness, poor maintenance, lack of awareness about the fire safety field. It should be the reason for this. These, are the reasons, these reasons are the sole responsibility of human being. So you may think that what way this topic is relevant to your field. It may be suitable for the industrial professional or it may be suitable for the people working fire and normal. Yes, include prevent ignition of the uncontrolled fire, also limit the development and effect of fire when it's stored. So fire is a great hazard. It should be identified and it should be eliminated. So this webinar provide basic knowledge about concepts of fire and how to use some of the firefighting equipments effectively in your working place and how to evacuate yourself and evacuate the surrounding in the event of fire. So with this objective, I just start the session. So this is my presentation overview. My presentation include the basic concepts of fire, some of the firefighting equipments, then evacuation method, then fire response, finally the questionnaire session. So what is fire? It's a simple definition of the fire. The fire is a chemical reaction between fuel and oxygen in the presence of heat. There are three elements, fuel, oxygen and heat. When these three elements combine together, form chemical chain reaction, cause fire. When a fire starts, these three elements should be essential. What are the elements? Oxidizer to sustain combustion, heat to reach ignition temperature, fuel or combustible material. When these three elements combine together, form chemical chain reaction, result fire. I also be given one more definition of the fire. The fire is a process in which Substances combine chemically with oxygen from the air and typically gives out bright light, heat and smoke, result combustion or burning. So this is a basic concept of fire. So there are three elements, fuel, oxygen and heat. So I would like to present one video which shows that the effect of fire and how the fire spread rapidly within a short duration. Hope you enjoy this video. Thank you. 
as we know the heat transfers occurs by either conduction convection or radiation but while fire start the heat transfers occurs by conduction convection and radiations what is conduction transfer of heat within the material convection transfer of heat by the movement of hot masses of air radiation is nothing but emission of heat in the form of electromagnetic wave so the heat transfer occurs rapidly while fire spread at any zones each and every material has its own ignition temperature it varies from one material to another material when the material is heated up to ignition temperature it start ignite this is a major this is a basic cause for the solid fire what is what the definition says it is a minimum temperature to which the material must be heated for it to ignite so this is a basic concept behind solid fire so the second important thing is the flash point the term flash point is relevant to the flammable liquid it is a lowest temperature at which a liquid produce enough vapor to form ignitable mixture as we know here what happen means one trace state transitions occur liquid to vapor while this transition occur it is a platform for the fire this is a basic concept behind fires occurs at flammable liquid so the solid fire liquid fire so causes for fire as we are aware of this causes carelessness throwing lighted matchsticks and cigarette butts naked lamp and electric wire electrical short circuit welding and cutting operation there are so many reasons behind the fire but all reasons are the sole responsibility of human being it all because of human errors most of the fire accidents because of human error in order to identify the suitable extinguishing agents you must be understand the material that are banned because fire involved solid material should be handled differently than a fire involved flammable liquid so the fires are divided into different classes class a class b class c class d class k and electrical fire this class based on the indian standards this class may vary according to the different standards what is class a fire the class a fire involve combustible solid material such as wood paper plastics cloth and rubbers so the fire started combustible solid material means which is called as a class a fire what is class b fire class b fire involve flammable liquid such as oil paint diesel petrol kerosene etc while the fire sto started flammable liquid called as class b fire class c include natural gases such as lpg cng ethane methane hydrogen class d involve flammable metal such as one of the few metals i represented here but so many metals are there magnesium titanium potassium and sodium the class k fire commercial cooking elements such as cooking oil and fat the finally electrical fire according to the us standard which falls under the category of e in some other standard it also be called as class c fire the class b which include them in flammable liquid and natural gases the electrical fire because of fire involve live electrical equipments so overloaded electrical outlet incorrectly wired plugs outlets and switches short circuit but one thing we should be remember while this appliances or this component disconnected from the fire source this fire may be considered as a class a fire so this will be the five different classes of fire before go for the fire begin the fire extinguishment most of the fire fighting equipments are intended for this purpose so there are there are some methodology to extinguish the fire starving what do you mean by starving removal of heat or removal of combustible material nearby as we know it is one of the element if you remove or remove remove, or remove the combustible material means we can able to cut put out the fire the second element name called smoothering what is smoothering reducing percentage of oxygen or cut off supply of oxygens so as we know the fire consumes oxygen from the air if the oxygen cut off means you can able to control or put out the fire from the fire zone so the example blanketing it is not mandatory for any specialized equipment we can make use of some wet cloths and cover the fire zone means we can able to control the fire this is a simple method 
So cooling is nothing but removal of Okay, hope you enjoyed the previous video. What happened means they are not using any specialized equipment. Using some commercial component, they put out the oxygen, the cell. So the fire will just be cut off. So next one is a fire production system. There are three major classifications of the fire production system. Passive fire production system, active, active fire production system, education, which is nothing but training. Passive fire production system include use of fire production material in your buildings. This fire production material prevent or slow down the spreading of the fire. It is not mandatory to use this material to the entire building, which is not economical. You can use such material in certain isolated area. This material includes fire rated doors, fire rated walls, fire rated floor, fire rated roofs. I am not going to discuss about the fat passive fire production system. It is a very large field. It is a role of the agriculture engineer. I am mainly concentrated about the active fire production systems. The active fire production system, there are two classes. First one, fire direction, then fire fighting method. Fire direction in, include the alarm systems. It's an indication sign of the fire. It's alert systems. The fire fighting and extinguishing system, while the fire start, what are, what are the different kinds of equipments used to cut off the fire? The education means educate the people against the, educate the people about the fire safety. If the people have enough knowledge, basic knowledge about the fire safety means so they can protect themselves, they protect the surrounding from the fire. There are three classes, passive fire production, active fire production and education. We are concentrate only about the active fire production and the education system. Now, before you use the extinguisher, you just know the basic components of the extinguishers. There are five major components of the extinguishers. Slender, handle, safety pin, pressure cage and hoses. The cylinder is mainly used for store extinguishing agent under pressure. The handle is mainly used to operate the fire extinguisher. The safety pin is mainly used to lock the handle. And next one, the pressure cage. The pressure cage which shows the internal pressure of the cylinder. The hose is the outlet passage of the extinguishing agent. This is a major component of the fire extinguisher. This is a cut section view of the water extinguisher. There are two classifications of the fire extinguisher, stored pressure tape, cartridge operated, but the stored pressure tapes are mostly, mostly used in this present situations. So the next one is a type of fire extinguishers. Water type fire extinguisher, foam type extinguishers, carbon dioxide type extinguisher, dry chemical powder extinguisher, wet chemical extinguisher, dry powder type extinguisher. There are different classes of fire. So one extinguisher is not sufficient to control all type of fire. Each ex extinguisher find its applica applications for different classes of fires. These are all the, some of the major classifications of the extinguishers. I just explain one by one. So water type extinguisher. The water type extinguisher is more suitable for A class fire as we know A class fire because of combustible solid material. How the extinguisher is working? What is the working principle behind this extinguisher? Work by removing heat element of the fire which is sufficient to cut off the fire. Here the extinguishing agent is water. So but it is more suitable for A type fire. It should not be used for B and electrical fire. As we know water is a good conductivity of electricity. But if you use this type of extinguisher for class B fire, so which further the fire spread in the area. 
So the form type extinguisher, the form type extinguisher is more suitable for A and B type fire. A involve combustible solid material, B liquids. So what is the purpose of this extinguishers? So what is the role of this extinguisher while it is in operating condition? Work by removing the heat elements of fire, also separating the oxygen from the other element. It performs two roles. Remove the heat element, separating oxygen from the other elements. So what are the extinguishing agent? The chemical used in foam type extinguishers are sodium bicarbonate and aluminum sulphate, which may be used as a fire suppression liquids to extinguish the fire. But it is more suitable for A and B type fire. This extinguisher should not be used for electrical fire. Carbon dioxide type extinguisher. The carbon dioxide type extinguisher is more suitable for B and electrical fire. Class B involve flammable liquid, electrical fire. How it is operating? Work by removing the oxygen element of the fire and also help remove the heat due to very cold discharge. So it controls the oxygen element, also remove the heat from the fire zone. It is more suitable for class B and electrical fire. But while we use this extinguisher, lot of attention should be taken care of this. As we know, CO2 is a harmful gas. The person should be properly trained to use this extinguisher. While we use this extinguisher, the spray nozzle, which is also called as horn, the horn should be always away from the head. It should not be towards the head. If anyone inhale the carbon dioxide, which creates a respiratory problem, lead to death. So lot of attention should be made by using this extinguishers. So the extinguishing agent is a carbon dioxide. So this is a dry chemical type extinguishers. It is a versatile fire extinguisher. There are more effective in class A, class B, and class C type fire. So class A, combustible solid. Class B, flammable liquids. Class C is a flammable gases. So how it's working? Work by interrupting the chemical reaction of the fire. As we know, fire is a chemical reaction. While we use such extinguisher, it interrupts the chemical reaction and cut off the fire. So this type of extinguisher use some powder material. This powder material is sufficient to put out the fire, the monoamonium, ammonium phosphate and ammonium sulphate. And next one is a wet chemical type extinguishers. This extinguisher specifically developed for class K fire that involve cooking oil and fat. So it finds its applications in restaurant and cafeteria how this extinguisher is working, how it performs the role while, is, while it is in operation. First, it removes the heat element. Then prevent reignition by creating the barrier between oxygen and the fuel. It performs two roles which is sufficient to put out the fire, but it is more suitable for class K fire. Next one, dry powder extinguishers. The dry uh, powder extinguisher is more suitable for class D fire involved combustible metal. So the purpose remains same, work by separating fuel and the oxygen of the fire. So which is sufficient to cut off the fire. But while the person involved the metal fire, lot of training should be required. Only the trained personnel should handle the metal fire. This kind of fire normally happens in the industrial sector. But lot of attention should be required. Only the trained personnel should handle such type of fire. The extinguishing agent is the sodium chlorate. So this will all be the different types of extinguishers. Find its application for different classes of fire. Next I will go to present on video. So the video which is relevant to how to use the different type of extinguishers for the different environments. So this is a common diagram for the use of extinguishers.
So what is the method to operate the fire extinguisher? It's a very simple method, pause. The pause is nothing but pull the safety pin, aim at the base of the fire, skews the handle, sweep back and forth to cover the entire area of the fire. As we are aware of this procedure, pause. Pull, aim, skew, squeeze and sweep. I would like to present one more video about the how to use the extinguisher. It's an animation video. You may have the clear idea about the use of fire extinguisher by using this procedure. How to use a fire extinguisher. In this short video, we'll cover how to properly use a fire extinguisher using the PASS method. Now, it's important to note that if a fire does occur in your workplace, that you follow these three important steps. Step 1. Once you've seen the fire, first grab the closest fire extinguisher, ensuring it's the correct type and class appropriate to extinguish the fire, and always make sure to keep your back to an unobstructed exit. If you do not think that you can put out the fire safely, make sure to evacuate the building. Step 2. Once you have your fire extinguisher, stand 6 to 8 feet away from the fire. Step 3. Follow the PASS four-step procedure. First is P for pull. Pulling the pin unlocks the operating lever and allows you to discharge the extinguisher. Next is A for aim. Make sure to aim the extinguisher nozzle or hose at the base of the fire. The first S is squeeze. Squeeze the lever. This discharges the extinguishing agent. Releasing the lever will stop the discharge. The second S is for sweep. While discharging the extinguisher, start moving towards the fire. Keep the extinguisher aimed at the base of the fire and sweep back and forth until the flames appear to be out. Once the fire has been extinguished, make sure to watch the fire area. If the fire reignites, repeat the process. Always remember that smoke generated from the fire can be harmful and even fatal. Never attempt to extinguish a fire unless it is safe to do so. Now to recap the PASS four-step procedure. P is for pull the pin. A is for aim the nozzle. The first S is for squeeze the lever. And the second S is for sweep. Okay, the application of using fire extinguishers. The fire extingu extinguishers are more effective for small fire and it should not be used in any of the following situation. First thing, you should be properly trained to use the extinguisher. I told you the effect of carbon dioxide extinguishers like this. You should be properly trained. It is not required the specialist training. The basic training is essential to utilize the fire extinguisher. The fire spread beyond its immediate area. In such situation, there is no role for the extinguisher. Your duty is to evacuate from the building. The fire could block your escape road. So at the beginning stage of the fire, we can make use of the extinguisher. Once the fire emerged to other area, there is no use of extinguisher. It requires some specialized equipment or be the fire professional should handle such system. So this is one of the manual fire op, uh, production system. So next, the hydrant systems. The hydrant system is one of the effective firefighting equipments. The hydrant system finds its application in commercial places like buildings, multi-story buildings, malls, hospitals, institutions, etc. So it provides a great, great platform to the firefighter to fight against the fire. It is intended to provide water for the firemen to fight the fire. It comprises of different components. Assembled together, provide source of water to a firefighter. But it is more suitable for most of the fire emerging situations. So there are different components I just be represented in the slides, water, water supply, this will be the different components. These components assembled together provide source of waters. But one thing you should be remember, while handled such systems, lot of training should be essential. Only the trained professional should be handled such situation because while it is in operating condition, lot of back pressure develop, only the physically fit or the trained person should be handle. If untrained person attempt to operate the equipment connected to such installation cause injury. Apart from this, one professional is not sufficient to operate such system. More than three person required to operate the 
systems. If one person taking care of the fire extinguish, ex extinguishment means other person taking care of the pump operations. In between the two persons, some communication media is essential because while the system is in operating, huge noise happens. So some communication media is also be affected by the human being such as water on, water off, pressure, increased pressure, decreasing pressure through some hand signal. But it is one of the effective firefighting systems. So I would like to present two video about the hydrant system. The first video which clearly shows the procedure to use the hydrant system. The second video which relevant to improper handling of the hydrant system. I hope you enjoy this video.
okay this will be the some out of some of the components of the hydrant systems hose reels nozzles based on the video presentation you just understand how to hold the nozzle so the mishandling of the nozzle or if you lose the nozzle means which cause severe damage so that is the reason only the trained professional should be use such equipment if you are properly trained we can make use of this equipment in case of emergency so this is one more hydrant system used in the airport fire service this is some advanced technology of hydrant systems <laughs> So this kind of advanced system eliminate the manual interruptions. So that some of the fire so far we discussed about the manual firefighting fire firefighting equipments, extinguishers and the fire hydrants. So now some of the automatic fire protection systems and fire information systems. So CCTV, CCTV is common. It's not only for the fire safety field, it finds its application in variety of field, smoke and heat detector. The smoke and heat detector is a detection system. It is mainly used to detect smoke and heat. So once the smoke detector detects the smoke means the information is communicated to the fire alarm, the IR alarm goes on. The heat detector also be the same purpose. Once it detects the heat, abnormal temperature within the at atmosphere, within the room, so it communicates signal to the alarm, so the alarm goes on. It is normally installed in the seal ceilings. So the sprinkler system, the sprinkler is one of the effective fire production systems. It finds its application in lot of commercial places. The main advantage of the sprinkler system is to put out fire at the beginning stage. It installed in the roof connected with the main pipeline which contains water under pressure. How the system is operated? sprinkler orifice and allow water to flow which is sufficient to suppress the fire. There are different classes of sprinklers, wet pipe uh, sprinkler system, dry pipe sprinkler system, deluxe sprinkler system, pre-action sprinkler systems. So each find its application in different types of environments. There are different classes of sprinkler head. So this green color, orange color. So it shows the temperature of the sprinkler system, uh, sprinkler head. So I would like to present one video about the use of sprinkler system in end confined space. If you are not used the sprinkler system, what will be the effect? by using such system they just suppress the fire at the beginning stage otherwise the fire spread rapidly okay this will be the sum of the firefighting components manual call point hooter the fire and evacuation alarm are intended to alert building occupant in case of fire or any emergency situa situation exists so what is the purpose of manual call point 
the manual call points are used to initiate an alarm signal and operate by means of a simple button press or when a glass is broken revealing a button they can be operate manual or be the automatic system so this system is interconnected with the heat and smoke detector so what is the purpose of hooter so hooter is nothing but sounder or audio indication of the fire signal it may alert the people working in the particular urban environments in case of fire happen so the people must be alert based on the alarm signal only if your environment have such equipment means so you may alert at the beginning stage so the fire suppression system this suppression systems are designed to extinguish fire in some sensitive environment so there are different types of extinguishing uh, fire fighting fire fighting equipment for the different types of application so the fire suppression systems are designed to suppress or extinguish fire in the sensitive environment what is the reason behind this the other fire prevention component is not a decide extinguishing unit the advantage of the system it uh, detect fire at the beginning stage through smoke heat and other warning signal there are so many fire suppression systems are there i would like to represent only the two suppression system co2 fire suppression system clean agent or inert gas suppression systems so the application server room engine room flammable storage area museum and data center control room it's such system it is not possible to use the sprinkler or any other fire protection system so this is a boost to double system the co2 fire suppression system is exclusively used for engine room generator room power station flammable liquid storage room and around large industrial machines the clean agent or inert gas suppression systems so which find its application environments where the personal working area in such situation the co2 compression system should not be used so this is a simple layout of the fire suppression system it contains the fire detector fire alarm systems also be the extinguishing agent contained within the cylinder so i would like to present one video that how the system is in working in case of emergency situation contained breathing apparatus which is also called as compressed air breathing apparatus it is a device used by rescue worker firefighter and other to provide a breathable air in an immediately danger to life so 
the self contained breathing apparatus support the rescue workers we must be taking care of the trees <laughs> fire what you have to do operate call point manual call point close door if possible so close if you close the door means it we will just prevent the spreading of fire to one room to another room do not run follow the exit sign indicated in your building go to your assembly points the assembly point and other things i just explained during the evacuation session so the fire evacuation what is fire evacuation fire evacuation is nothing but it's a written document which provide information about how to extinguish so how to evacuate from the building or in any fire environment in the source of in the event of fire so it is nothing but clear step by step procedure for the occupant to vacate a building in an orderly and safe manner during an emergency and to assemble at the safe place for roll call the fire evacuation is very essential you should be aware about the fire evacuation so the using the fire extinguishers only for the limited version so once the fire emerges there is no duty for inside the building you must be evacuate from the building while we evacuation some step you need to be follow this step should be follow instantly and because we have very minimum durations to evacuate from the building so what are the things we have to do means so first thing use the fire extinguisher if you are trying if you are not trying so better you vacate from the buildings stay calm and educate the evacuate the building immediately when you hear the fire alarm as we know the fire alarm is a indication sign for indication sign for fire once the fire alarm ring so you just vacate the room so whatever work you just do close the work and vacate the room so use for use your nearest available fire exits do not go back gap for personal belongings do not use lift do not re enter building till advised to do so so while escape if possible close all the doors and window so which can cut the fire and smoke for spreading from one room to another rooms so this is all the procedure we need to be follow this procedure 
vary from one building to other building that depending upon the working atmosphere but this should be the common step you need to be follow for any situation don't use the lift don't try to take your personal belongings better thing is to evacuate from the room life is more important than anything so while evacuation so means of escape what you have to do so hold your breath move quickly covering head and hair keep head down and close eyes as often as possible which may prevent your eye or anything from the fire or be the smoke so if cloth catches fire what you have to do so stop where you are drop to the ground and cover your mouth and face with your hands to protect them from the flame so while the cloth catches fire means then don't try to run stop so crawl down and roll that's all so ensure all personnel are out of the building these are all the thing you should be remember while do the evacuation process so assembly point so you may be aware of the assembly point this assembly point normally located at the outside of the building it is a large area so after the evacuation you should be assembled at the assembly point what is the reason behind this we you just evacuate the building what is the necessary to meet at the assembly point then only the fire professional knows that how many of them inside and how many of them outside so the fire assembly point is a location where staff and visitors can gather in the event of fire to ensure everyone is in the designed safe area Fire assembly point sign help you to make sure that people will know their where to gather following an emergency evacuation. Even if you see your building, the outside of the building, this kind of indication sign was given. This indication sign after the evacuation, you just go to the assembly point. So some uh, so for counting. So the fire drill, the fire drill is nothing but training. the fire drills are a vital part of your workplace safety so fire drill performed by some expertise team member within your organization or otherwise you just call some expertise team from the outside so it's like a virtual reality so we just create the situation fire happens in your working area how to evacuate so the people are working in the normal area suddenly the fire alarm goes on the people stop their work and evacuate so reach at the assembly point this practice may help you to evacuate from the fire evacuate from you from the in case of the fire so in your concern at least once in a year or twice in a year you should prepare this fire drills either you perform by this individual persons or be performed by some expertised team so this is one of the evacuation demo this demo which shows that while evacuation what you have to do what you should not do to carry out roll call and account for all employees quickly what should you not do in an emergency evacuation panicking during an emergency evacuation can lead to further danger and cause potential injury to yourself and those around you do not crowd exit routes this can slow down the evacuation procedure and cause potential injury to yourself and those around you do not use elevators if you have one in your office It may break down due to power failure and you might be trapped. Please avoid casual approach to evacuation procedures either during evacuation or while assembling. Do not move around or away from the assembly point. Remember, this is an emergency evacuation. Do not return to your workplace until you have received the all clear and are authorized to do so by your floor warden or the assembly point in charge. the smoke when we talk about the fire you should be concentrate about the smoke even smoke who, who is healthy can get sick if there is enough smoke in the air so the smoke kills slowly but the sorry the fire kills slowly but smoke will kill immediately and instantly so smoke is a part of the fire the smoke inhalation kill in just a few minutes if a person inhale the smoke which cause respiratory problem cost lead to death so you should be handle smoke in a most effective way there should be some proper training required to evacuate in case of smokes so the crawling so the crawling is a best effective way to escape from the smoke so look at the pictures how the persons evacuate from the building so next i would like to present one video this video shows that one fire professional just evacuate 
the victim who just be unconscious in uh, because of the smoke response how will you react in case of fire race rescue alarm confine extinguish if you are trained otherwise evacuate so if fire occur this is your method of response something you have to do something should not do stop the work and escape there is no duty for the there is no duty once the fire emerge in your area so once we evacuate reach the assembly point if possible call the emergency number if small fire it try to extinguish if you are trying try to extinguish otherwise evacuate the building so don't try to collect your personal belonging don't rush and panic i i hope this evacuation video much helpful to understand about the evacuation process never use elevator lift under any circumstances don't hide this is all the thing you should be follow this like a procedure if you follow this procedure instantly so you may evacuate from the fire so everyone must know so based on this introductions everyone must know what is fire common causes of fire what to do in case of fire nearest fire extinguisher how to operate and fire extinguishers how to operate and fire alarm what on fire alarm sound like in your buildings the nearest means of escape escape route within your building what to do if you hear the fire alarm who to call a if a fire start how to open the fire exit door why it is important to go for the assembly point this question you should be answer based on this presentations okay ensure that you know don't fight the fire yourself when the fire is spreading beyond the limit fire can block your only escape you cannot you don't have adequate fire fighting equipment and training if you have the adequate fire equipment and fire fighting equipments means you try to evacuate but you should be properly trained this is all the thing you should be know while fight against the fire okay for any clarification feel free to contact within the short duration i just give only the minimum input about the fire and safety it's a emerging field it's a very large field so so many inputs are there so many concepts are there so if possible we will meet you in the next webinar if you have any questions we just clarify so feel free to contact this is my email id official email id we the team of member ready to help you at any situations any questions so that depends upon the capacity any questions okay one more question rise so what is the main reason reason for using a dry pipe sprinkler system instead of a wet pipe sprinkler systems is it so okay so there are four classes of sprinkler system pre action wet pipe dry pipe delete sprinkler system the wet and dry, dry this four sprinkler system find its application in different environment but while we use the wet pipe sprinkler system in the cold area what happen means the the pipeline which contains the water the water freeze which cause damage to the environment if you use the dry type sprinkler systems so the pipe which contains only pressurized water or nitrogen so which so the so that is a reason so it is a better option for this okay any other question any simple questions sir questions kaatukanga 
Okay, thank you. I just hand over the session to Dr. Horace Ganesh. Good noon to one and all present. On behalf of the Department of Fire Technology and Safety Engineering, I would like to thank our Chancellor, Pro-Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, Registrar for their encouragement and support to conduct this webinar. Our special thanks to Dr. Sajin Narkunam, Director Academic for the technical support to given to us for this webinar. My sincere thanks to Professor James Tinagar Williams for his hard work to prepare this presentation and excellent delivery on the basics of fire technology and safety engineering in a simple way to understand with the live video clips also. I would like to thank all the participants from various parts of the country, which includes academicians, students, and a lot of industry professionals. They have shown very much interest to attend this live webinar. Thank you very much for the, all the participants. Finally, I would like to thank the coordinators for this webinar, Dr. R. Rajesh and Dr. P. Bhavanish, for their support to make this live webinar very success. I soon we will plan to make live webinars as well as the faculty development program for this. Thank you very much for your effort and live up to this. Thank you very much. Thank you. 